Okay, good refresher. Now let's go in and learn some new concepts. So for this next example, I must use my wife, and I know she hates it. She hates it whenever I talk about her in class or I use her as an example in these videos. But uh, we as a family will often go to family parties or other activities, and I am super chill. right? I'll be chatting away, not really paying attention. And my wife is the responsible one who says, hey, do you think maybe we ought to get the kids to bed? It's a school night, right? She's, she's saying, maybe we ought to go. And uh, then, uh, you know, and I, I say, okay, okay. And then I just am still chatting away. Uh, terrible husband. And she gets her, what I would say, go button pushed, right? She's ready to go. And then as we linger longer, then that go button gets pushed more and more and more. And she is really ready to go. And she's getting frustrated with me because it's taking so long. And so I'm going to use this idea, this little concept to teach you about state and hooks. We call them in React. And so I'm going to clean up this code one more time. Again, we just built this, but we don't need any of it. Let's get rid of these tags that we've got in here. Uh, get rid of all this stuff so we can focus on just these, uh, this one little example and kind of hone in on it. So I'm going to create a function called go button. And this go button is going to have a few different components. So I'm going to return, again, returning multiple things. So I will create a React fragment. And then inside of that, the first thing I'm going to put in here is a actual button. And this button is going to say go. So you can push this go button. And then I'll do a little break tag here. Another little break tag just to get a couple lines of space in between. And then I'm going to put in a label that tells us how much go we've currently got. So amount of go. All right, so how would we typically handle this? Wouldn't we usually, if we're trying to keep track of how much go, wouldn't we usually create a variable? So we have in here a const. We could create a const variable. Wow, const and call it uh, you know level of go or something like that and set equal to zero at first. And then continue to increment it. Each time this go button gets pushed, we'd have a little uh, function in here we could create that, that it increases the level of go. All right, well, this is where we need to talk about state. HTML is a stateless technology, meaning things don't persist as we uh, go from one page to the other page. If as we leave the page, and you've seen this message, you're leaving this page, do you want to save changes? Because we're leaving the page, all that information is going to be lost as we move from page to page. And so we need to figure out how to get variables and other information that's on the screen to persist. Now, people have solved this by creating cookies, and you save information to the cookie, and then when you go back to that page, that information is still there. Sometimes we save it to the database. We actually put it permanently in the database so that when we come back to that site, it can go grab it from the database again. Uh, sometimes we build a session object, we call it, that we pass from one page to the other to be able to retain the information about that session, I'm doing air quotes, session, where uh, the user is on that site. So we consider a session when the user is still on the site navigating around, that's one session. And so one of the problems that React aims to solve is this issue with state. Now, React uses what's called an SPA, or it is an SPA technology. SPA stands for Single Page Applications. In something like ASP.NET or other technologies, we move from one page to the other. So as soon as we click to a new page in that website, it has to go get a new bundle from the server and bring down that new page. When we go back to the home page, it goes up and gets the bundle again and brings it back to the home page. Each time we do that, we are losing state. We're losing the information that was saved on the site, like level of go. And so uh, one way to solve this is to use a single page application like React. And what we do is we, we frame everything in this index HTML page, but then we have all the files loaded up and we just jump from one you know, view to another view, but without ever going to the server. It's all already there. Now we might need to go to the server to get data to bring into the view. 
but the shell of the view is already there. We load it all up from the beginning, and then we just go around uh, changing what's on the page, but never actually leaving the page. All right, so we, we load up everything from the, the beginning, then we navigate within our, what we call frame. This is much, much faster and React is aiming to be super fast because we never have to go, well, not never, we, we go a lot less to the server, which is really slow compared to how fast your computer uh, runs. Going out to the internet and downloading things and having the server bundled something up, even though it happens relatively fast, is not nearly as fast as having those things happen directly on your computer, you know, with your this many gigahertz processor. All right, so back to this idea of functions in React. So we have a functional component here. This is app. These are helper functions that aren't uh, being exported like app is, and we'll show more of that in a minute. But uh, each of these functions, these, the, this functional component, can have information tied to it. So it can have uh, whatever we need in terms of variables tied to it to keep track of uh, different information and maintain state. I had to pause for a brief second because my phone keeps buzzing that's sitting on the desk. I'm sure you can hear that. And I just looked at it's student questions coming in one right after the other. So it must be the due date of an assignment, which it is. All right. So back to the functions in React, we call again these functional components. And so what we're gonna do is uh, set up a state or, or what we call React hooks with this functional component. So instead of doing this, I'm gonna change my const and I'm going to uh, create a const and it's gonna have two parts. And the first part is going to be the level of go. So that's a square bracket. And I'm going to keep track of, I'm actually gonna call it the go level because that's what it says in my notes. And we know if I vary from my notes, things do not go well. So const go level. And then the second part of this is what is the method that is going to change or modify, update this um, level of go. And so I'm going to uh, create one here that says update the go. All right, so I've got two different parts here. Well, and then I'll, I'll do the third thing and then we'll talk through each of them. The last thing is to set the initial state. So I'm going to use state, it, it's called, so use an initial state or a default state of one. And I'm gonna use one because we're gonna multiply here and if I have put zero, then it's going to not be very exciting as we multiply. And so, and, and it's probably true to say my wife always has a go level of one. I would say that that's like a standard state. And then we increase from there. Um, so we now have this, what's called uh, a React hook in place. We're going to use state. So I've got some errors. And when I hover over this, it's gonna say, I don't know what you mean by use state. And if we do the quick fix, it's going to say, do you wanna add the import from React? And so we're gonna get back in this statement we had a while back before we started deleting stuff saying, do you wanna import use state from React? And so this is a thing that's built into React that is uh, very normal and helpful for us as we create these different components. So different parts. So the first part is that we, we keep track of the go level and then this, the second part is that we update the level of Go. So this is a, a method for us to be able to do that, a way for us to be able to do that. It's built into this variable as Go level. And then we set the initial state to whatever it is we want to set it to. So to get, we wanna give a default value to that. All right, so what do we do with this now? Well, we're gonna find out in the next video because I'm just looking at the clock. So continuing on in the next video, talking about state, Spencer out.